wish we, I wish we would have caught that one on recording. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, what can you do? Yeah, wonderful. It's a very beautiful background you got there, nice and tidy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I don't want to see the other the other stuff that's outside the frame. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. I love you so much, Kyle. Wonderful. Anyway, I'll let I'll let you I'll let you do what you gotta do. And Wonderful. I guess we'll 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 include every, this whole thing right in the beginning because it's so natural and organic and it's um and just to show show people we're not stiff little robots just so yeah, everybody right. wants to hear you know so yeah, right. yeah well yeah. thank you thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk with you Luhan. um yeah hi to welcome all the parallel perceptions people out there like my name's kyle vandenbrook and i've had a relationship with Luhan for about six ish years um gone through my ups and downs with like wrestling with his teachings like he punches my ego a little bit and it's really good and I'm grateful for it. Um, but in, it was interesting, at early January, I had like a panic attack. And I've always dealt with these kind of incessant nagging OCD thoughts that are like, I'm bad and like, oh, I should die and all these things. And I emailed Luhan <clears throat> and he does this thing where he like allows for his students to just share what's going really going on for them. And he kind of clears it. Um, and so he invited me to come to his workshop, um, and yeah, I sat there explaining myself, telling my story, and all I felt was like this pressure kind of building inside of me, and Luhan's just listening, and I'm kind of expecting him to say something to me, and he's not, say he's not saying anything, he's not responding to me, so I just keep telling whatever story I'm telling. And by the end of it, he just goes, yeah, you know, I think I've, I've felt that before. Are you actually letting go of everything that you've been worrying about? And I just felt like that, I don't even know what it was. It was such a strange experience, but like a train hit me and all of a sudden, like I knew what you were saying to be true. And all of that stuff kind of dissolved. And for the next two or three weeks, I didn't have any of those thoughts at all. And I don't have them anymore. So thank you, Will. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for your devotion to us as students and your loving compassion for us and desire to help us resolve the things that are bothering us. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know, I guess like that's kind of like a, yeah, if you feel any apprehension towards engaging with Luhan, like engage with him. He loves you. He's, re he's ready to kind of be there for you if you need it. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's reciprocal because uh, I, I really believe that um, not only being a teacher, but being a, being a valuable friend to a person uh, is really important. And, you know, if you don't feel embraced as a, as a human being from your own perspective and understood from a, from a deep emotional level, then the, there's, no, there's no real discourse. I mean, intellectually, you can have a discourse and you can be talking about very, very um, fantastical things and very, very refined um, conversations towards subject matter. But if the heart's not open, if you can't connect with a person and, and allow them to feel comfortable, and then the, then the inf information stream will, will flow in between you in such a, in such a unusual, beautiful way that it just it just releases everybody because when i when i hear my students say something it goes straight inside of me and i experience what they're experiencing immediately and then and then transform that through just loving and caring for them in terms of in terms of the position they're in so i don't know what else to say other than that yeah thank you i mean it kind of c comes into a little bit of the topic that i was sharing with you over the email um, the question I had about Jesus and there's a passage in the Bible. Can I read it? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, it's a passage that has always struck me pretty powerfully. Um, and it says this, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but to the interests of others. In, in your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. 
Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. So yeah, for me, that's like, it seems like a lot of the teachings that you have given, which is like, be water, like go to the lowest place. Like, don't put yourself on a pedestal. Allow yourself to be seen, but don't, don't take, don't take the credit for anything. And it's kind of what you do. Yeah, look, I mean, ooh, there's so much we can unpack in that. Yeshua was such a beautiful, beautiful human being, really. So, so when we look at this, all we're gonna let, let's let's actually travel through it incrementally. Hey, eh? yeah. let's 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 read the 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 first the first little bit and unpack it, and then read the next bit, unpack it, read the next bit and unpack it. And well, this is that is astonishing to believe to to actually believe somebody had the had the courage and the ability to say that thousands of years ago and it's actually relevant right now and it's relevant to the point uh that that is unbelievably synchronous for for everybody who's on their path actually because uh, everything you've everything that you've you've mentioned there is absolutely the correct way to function as human beings uh all around the board yeah it's beautiful so yeah. How about we unpack it very, very slowly and and let's let's navigate every single piece of that, because the relevance the relevance of of the last part when we get to that will will make this very very obvious. But the but the the main thing is not to be larger than who you really are, even if you're larger than who you really are. <laughs> be, yeah, and and to subdue your need to be in in a state of comprehension in terms of the powers that have been made available to you but refuse those powers because they're corrupting within the nature and it and it uh it, it by 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 the corruption somebody puts themselves in a position which which um is actually the seat that can't be sat in because once you sit in that seat it will indirectly destroy everything on your path so then then when it destroys everything on your path you'll be you'll be released and then put into the into the most humble um, reflective position that you could ever be in so this saying this saying has a has a lot of um support and a lot of love within it in terms of its uh, in terms of what it's representing yeah. so and and let's let's do it this way how about how about you tell me your understanding of this and then we'll navigate every single section so that we can have a discourse in terms of um um loving and devotional response to this uh incredible scripture actually yeah yeah so it starts uh, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit rather in humility value others above yourself not looking to your own interest, but to each of you to the interest of others. Okay. Yeah, wow. wow. <laughs> isn't, isn't, isn't this amazing? Yeah. Yeah, and like, it's interesting to work in, so I work uh, as a therapist, I'm an intern right now, and I'm working in addiction recovery. Um, and the, I notice sometimes a little pride thing come up and being like, yeah, I'm the one who's helping somebody. Like I'm helping, they, they had an accomplishment, I'm helping them. And I have to like check that and be like, hang on, no, actually like their interest is above mine. And actually their, their accomplishment is their own accomplishment. And the actual saying is be of service. Yeah. To forget oneself, to disappear from oneself is to truly be of service to somebody else. And this opens you to, to receive everything of pertinence in terms of the value of, of um, the magic that you're going to put on the table um, by being of service to that person. So let, let's, do, let's do something strange. Let's do something re repetitive. Let's, let's read it again. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Yeah. 
Now, even when you look at the beginning of that, the same is the, the, the beginning is exactly the same as the end, except it's given prominence and relevance to, to, to an area that maybe one person will understand. And then, then a person that can't really understand the first proposition, when you get to the end of it, it, uh, it, it actually annihilates every, every single ounce of selfishness in terms of self-reflection to want to be um, above every, everybody because you're helping, just like you said. And this, this is very, very important. So even even though now we've we've sort of like you said something I've said something the his saying has disappeared, right. but it's but it's it's gained relevance within our conversation. Um, but what are the what's what's what is the first hinge pin? Let's have a look. Let's let's read it again. Yeah, do Just nothing, the first little. Do nothing yeah. out of selfish ambition. Do nothing out of yeah. out of self, yeah, selfish ambition. I mean, what does that what does that say? It says be of service. Yeah. Uh, do, do not be conceited. Uh, do not uh, hold anything fixed for your own desire. Let it completely flow like water uh, to its most appropriate position. And then when it calls upon you to commune with it, you're truly in the right spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what's, what's then the next? Then you have the ability to commune with your environment. Yeah. You're not trying to add something to the environment. You're letting the environment speak to you to tell yeah. you what it needs. Yeah, you're actually they're very good words. You're allowing the environment to deposit certain elements of itself within you, and you become the 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 empty the empty waters or the or the crystal clear uh, substance which has no substance but has more vibratory essence than than anything of substance. So emptiness is full of uh, of everything else other than itself <laughs> yeah it's, it's beautiful car uh, yeah. You, yeah yeah you know like uh growing up i i grew up having really profound experiences where i felt like heat flood through my body and i felt the love of jesus really powerfully really strong and then i came yeah. a time where i was like oh this is there's some beliefs here in the church that are not good for me and they're not good for people in general and it's kind of controlling and this domineering this power over thing that wasn't what this passage is talking about right yeah so kind of throughout everything the baby out with the bathwater and like yeah trying to restructure and find that again has been difficult. Yeah. Look, when you say that you were filled full of heat, you were filled full. Can you describe what, with a, with with acuity and with 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 nuance, exactly what you experienced when it came inside of you, so everybody can really experience exactly yeah. who you were at that moment. And then I'll talk about something that happened to me, which is it's virtually exactly the same, but but because it's not exactly the same, it is appropriate for every individual to experience something divine coming within you. And that's and that's the power of of a Gnostic intelligence, because not the, the reason why the Gnostics were so difficult to get along with, they would read a passage or they would get a, a form of wisdom and they were and they were transferred that from that wisdom in comparison to the elements and the structure of the nature which appeared in front of them. And they would adapt to that and then then infuse their wisdom in terms of their insights into the new circumstance instead of taking the circumstance and saying, here's the saying, abide by this saying and adhere to this saying and not address the actual natural flow within the environment. That's why the Gnostics were, were, were kind of like, hey, guys, we're going to get these Gnostics out they're making things very, very difficult because we can't control the masses like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so my experience was, I heard my friends talking about some of their experiences and I was like, what is that? And I remember feeling a lot of shame in my life and I prayed, I was like, God, if you're, if you're real, I wanna know you. And I forgot completely about that prayer. And then the next week I'm sitting in, ch in church and my pastor says, oh, you have to turn the your dial to the Holy Spirit channel, <laughs> like the 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 radio dial, you're like tuning your frequency. And so I was like, we started listening to some music and all of a sudden I feel kind of a pressure in my body and like heat start to flood from the head all the way down to my toes and I start to cry and I feel like totally seen and totally loved no matter anything that I, that I didn't like about myself or um, was I was totally enveloped in this kind of love and 
I'm like crying. I got snot bubbles coming out my nose. I'm just like, I'm sh I'm shocked. I don't really know what's happening. It's a kind of a confusion of like, what is going on and, and what is happening to me right now? But I felt okay. so Wow, that's, sorry, I just bumped into you. That is incredible. What was, what was, what was nudged out of you? What was bumped out of you? was the self-talk which is destroying your character and destroying the pure the pure idea of who you really are and reminding you of what you should be looking at so you can be diminished to such a degree that you can't that uh, that that you're isolated and then everybody else's opinion in terms of their their focus on you and their opinion towards themselves gains prominence and then you lose spirit then you lose uh, you lose the angelic the, the angelic um, vibratory essence or the or the um, frequency which you're meant to uh, become subject to and as you become subject to that frequency it it destroys the the self-deprecating idea of oneself yeah. and yeah and what's really not understood in that whole situation is probably everybody released their ideas and their judgments on themselves and judgments to everybody else and then this beautiful feeling this this embracing angelic feeling came upon everybody at once because when um, and uh, and let's go back to another another biblical saying if one or more gather within my name the power is multiplied um exponentially yeah and the nature of this experience was that i didn't do anything to get it yeah i didn't because you oh cry. yes you did oh yes you did <laughs> yes you did <laughs> You actually, you actually landed in your true nature, and your true nature revealed to to you who you really are, not not who you deem yourself to be, not the mistakes that you've made. And so the now let's go back to to say Hindu Indian philosophy in terms of karmic karmic residue and karmic in in uh, let's let's call it karmic entitlement. <laughs> I'm in, I, I'm entitled to have my 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 karmic um, entitlement to to have this this idea that I can't release myself from because I need the guilt to purify myself. The guilt is what entangles someone into the, into the, into the karmic idea or the karmic entanglement uh, with your mind and your emotion, you know, in the, in the power of emptiness, the thief and the ghost. It's exactly the same thing. So if you have a, have a karmic in, in, um, entanglement with somebody, you've got the idea and the feeling coming towards you in terms of what what they may throw towards you and then how you receive that and then what your your mind and your feeling does to them and you've got a karmic entanglement between your mind and your own emotion it's so complex and then you've got a karmic entanglement with the mind and emotion of somebody else who's not purely communicating with you because they believe at that particular point that they can't see you can't see excuse my french you can't they're believing you can't see their their entanglement with their own emotional uh, disruption to judge you because of their own unrefined nature to put you into a position and imprison you and they believe that the only karmic entanglement is what they say to you in terms of their reference of who you are in comparison to what they know will hurt you and what will demean you or what will crush you instead of saying okay well let go of everything you've done because it can't be retrieved it cannot be resolved uh, in terms of what's happened um, it's gone so let's meet each other on the table of i've never met you before hmm. i've never seen you before and you're allowed to be exactly who you are right now without the idea of yourself which is like a prison sentence and if somebody else gives you a prison sentence and you're already doing that to yourself then the then the the cage is so refined and so invisible that it encases you within a um, within a vibration which is which is totally opposite to the vibration that you feel when when something floods in and you release yourself from all these entanglements and then you're free and you go what happened you just became you just became an empty vessel a divine empty vessel but you've still got your eyes you've still got your feelings you've still got your ears and um you know, you still go have to go and have a cup of coffee and breakfast. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's the, yeah. Yeah. And so you're talking about that guilt that it kind of helps to activate that because if you don't have any sense that I, oh, uh, yeah. What, what do you mean by that? Like the guilt is important. Is it kind of what you're saying? Not really. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, okay. How did you understand what I was saying? Just you're saying like, the guilt that. allows you to like, feel like, oh, something something needs to be released i guess from within me and i need something to release me from that 
and yeah. so then the experience come upon you and then it allows you to release that yeah you you release it through forgiveness right. i mean to, to 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 understand something we rely on the forgiveness forgiveness of other people but but the forgiveness of other people uh uh, genuinely should be there anyway because you can't retrieve a moment which is already gone but you can you can uh, repetitively put it on the pedestal where it reveals something which isn't really relevant anymore so the human being uh, moves into these uh, non-relevant situational attunements which have got to do with the past instead of where they're trying to go to uh, via not looking at the past themselves or the, or the trauma of that particular past event and how it's entangled with so many different individuals in terms of your communication with friends and family and uh, associates. So that particular trauma is never ever uh, dealt with because it's so complex. And even I would say it's best to, to speak to what's in the room right now because the past is in the room right now. But uh, if you go back retrospectively to speak about something from the past which has been traumatic, then the, the danger is that the that the individual will remember only aspects of their experience instead of realizing every single nuance of their presentation at this particular moment because all those nuances are collected in a in a certain a certain sort of vault and that vault will has a combination to it and the combination is reliant on the person's awareness to go back to that vault put a different combination to get a different element and that's retrospective so retrospectively going back to something means that someone will get their consciousness and go, okay, I'm going to open up the vault of my past. And depending on the pressure, depending on the on the circumstances, they will only retrieve what, what is relevant in terms of their memory, what is relevant in terms of their present realization in comparison to the past. And the past uh, doesn't really uh, release all the information because they've only gone to one one particular element that they that they remember very very clearly or it has relevance because it's it's stuck uh within the field of their of their perception in terms of something that they that's smarting inside of them something which which hurts which which isn't which, which doesn't have the full ramifications of all the complex elements because we always go to one one particular area to remember because it's still it's still resonating with sort of pain or resonating with with a non-resolve so you go back to that without the without the rest of um, the complex elements um, inside of that so that you can bring that forward and then when the thief and the ghost or the or the or the the part of somebody wants to protect themselves from being totally revealed so they're so they're not uh, fully looking at what happened in the past so that's why that's why it's really really important to to actually not deal with the past but deal with what manifests in the complexity of the very moment which which allows that new unfruited tree unflowering tree to actually uh, start again just like the from the from the power of emptiness in terms of the mango growth right and i mean obviously this um this is going to be difficult for people who haven't read that book but um but i know you understand where i'm coming from so we're still dealing with the first little part of the of what yeshua said yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And that kind of lines up with the neuroscience of it because they know that when we remember something, even whether that's a memory or that's a bodily memory, we're, we're experiencing something similar to we had in the past. The proteins in our brain that are connected with those parts of the memory, they break apart and they can be reshaped, but it's in that moment that it's being recollected. It's not ever anything in the past that happened. Memory happens right here and now. Yes exactly true so you so then can you really trust your memory you you your memory just say if you if you empty yourself of all your all your visual memory all your auditory memory uh then you then you're dealing with emotional memory now emotional memory if you look at emotional memory you you say well i'm stuck and you look back if you look back without your mind you look back in such a clear way then then you know in the future that's going to be that's going to be packed in somewhere in a little treasure chest that you haven't um, opened up to find out uh, where where is the wealth of this experience in terms of where my re emotional release comes from from the past in the present moment and that where we, that's where wisdom is is virtually put on the table in terms of understanding uh, the uh, the corresponding feeling that somebody else may have which is very very similar and this helps crack um everybody open when this is when this is expressed yeah yeah 
Yeah, totally. And you can see it when it happens in a group where, I mean, like if someone's experiencing it with you and they're having an emotional catharsis or a release of emotions, you, everyone in the group feels it. We all feel it. And, and I, I cry when I see it happen in other people. Yeah. So you, even when you, okay, if we look at this very, very clearly, clearly to be of service and to allow a blind man to see. And when the blind man, when, when Yeshua turned around to the blind man that touched his garment, when the blind man touches the garment, then this is only one part of the, the, the biblical rev revelation or the, the realization that you can have. The blind man touches my, who's touching my garment? And he turned around and saw that a blind, blind man was touching his garment. And, and when you interpret that, you say, well, a blind man touched his garment, but what could the man really see? And was the man dressing him in? inappropriate clothing in comparison to what Yeshua deserved uh, to be put to put, put in. So what 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 clothing are you dressing me within in terms of are you dressing me in your poverty and then uh, then gently putting his hands upon the blind man's eyes and the, then the blind man really sees. But there's there's no reference to he let go of Yeshua's garment and his prediction of what he can obtain through touching this particular individual. So so when when he realized that maybe his his unwillful desire in terms of the first part of the saying i'll get you to read it again in a second um may have been in that blind man and when yeshua dispelled uh the the notion of who yeshua is here really in comparison to him then then his eyes were opened and his eyes were opened because maybe he wasn't maybe he was be of the world but not of it and then you then you add this in beyond the world of not of it. So um, so instead of being dressed in that clothing, be of the world but not of it, he takes his hand away from Yeshua. He is in the world but not of it at that point. And then he realizes how blind he was in terms of his projection towards another human being. Now this reverts back to what you said, your projection towards yourself, your self-hate, your self-loathing, uh, you don't want to live because you're dressing yourself in a garment which doesn't suit uh, the, the, the magnificence and, the, and the, the, the genuine feeling of, of abandoned love that you've got in your chest. <laughs> so maybe, maybe now and we should... Jesus, do... every, every time <laughs> Jesus heals someone, every time he heals someone, he says, your faith has made you whole. Yes, your faith has made you whole. And it was not about a belief system. It was like you had a felt sense of you knew if you came to me, you would be healed. That's your faith. Yeah. So so then we're actually when we're looking at that, if we're looking at entanglement and uh, and what 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 yesterday we were saying at that but at that particular point, I'm not going to entangle myself with you. So it reverts back to the person and the person release releases their karmic entanglements in terms of their projections towards their circumstances. So then their circumstances uh, become shiny and new because the, the, the old eyes are put aside and new eyes are seeing the world in the way that they've never noticed before because the old eyes were entangled with the, with the original uh, self-deprecating idea of themselves and the feelings that went along with that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and that, so then it says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, yeah. humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but to your interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ, who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God to be something to be used to his own advantage. Yes, there you go. So there, so that's, 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 that is, we're still unpacking it, but that is very un, unselfish uh, position that Yeshua puts himself to be so empty. But he and, also knows his identity. I am in the very nature of God. Yeah, that's who I am, and so yeah. I will give from that place. But I'm not going to assume that I'm above you. But I know yes. that you have the very nature of God as well. Yes, but what he's actually saying there, I have a power. I have many, many different powers which I'm not going to display. I'm only going to give you love and kindness, because love and kindness is more more powerful than moving a mountain more powerful than turning um, water into wine. The most powerful thing that we've got as human beings to be openly open and very, very truthful and very, very vulnerable on the level of our heart center. This is the only way, the only power that has relevance. 
So put yourself so so in actual in actuality from even from a Hindu perspective, when they say uh, you have a city or you have a power, you have something that you've obtained, put it aside. The only thing that matters to be vulnerable and open and be loving and caring to those that um, don't really understand how to be of service and full of love and caring. To embrace to embrace a child and pull it to your chest because of its vulnerability exists from the moment you're born till the moment you die. <laughs> oh, I love you, Kyle. Kyle, this is this is such a beautiful conversation. <laughs> yeah. So, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. Yeah, a servant, not servitude. But to be of service, this is this is very very beautiful. I mean, this is this is this is very very old information, extremely old information. You go to Tibet, they'll they'll say the same thing. Mm -hmm. You go to a Zen master, he'll say exactly the same thing, but in just in a different way. So this this is um, I just love Yeshua. I just think what a superb and magnificent human being he was. Is powerful because his his story begins kind of with being baptized by John the Baptist, who right in the in the Hindu traditions you have the the transmission of 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 enlightenment or the energetic transmission of the lineage of a guru passed down from human to human in the energetic presence of those people. So Jesus received a water baptism from. Uh, from John the Baptist, he goes into the wilderness and then he has his trials with the devil and he's like gets tempted and he comes out good and then he goes and teaches his disciples and then he transmits them and he gives he baptized them in fire. And so I don't know, I, I'm 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 grateful to know a master, someone who has the <laughs> no, has no, an no, energetic no 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 <laughs> no no, no. I, I'm not no matter what I've obtained, the most important thing is is love and affection and true understanding because that's the only supportive, supportive platform that, that could possibly be given to you via me in terms of friendship and love. Um, being 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 a um, inaccessible teacher is not really the way. But now you had a question mark being baptized being baptized in fire, but we also uh, we're also baptized within water. So the so the difference between the two baptisms of fire and water, obviously water is very is 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 very very self evident, because water will will translate, will give you information that 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 it has obtained. So if somebody's in the water before they baptize you, they're pure. So the water turns pure, at that particular point before you enter, and then they then they ask you to give uh, to give everything that you've done that you're not proud of. Uh, to the to the person who's baptizing to you or to the, to a higher power and they, they go into the water they come back and they're they're purified they're baptized so they have one portion of themselves no matter what mistakes they make after after that they can always go back to that reference points of transmutation uh, transformation where the where they they become like they become like water at that particular point so any substance that come in that comes in that's entangling they can go well i can transform this because i'm full of water and but when you when you get entangled uh, what's happening is you're becoming entangled on the level of on the level of uh, frequency which uh, which changes the water into crystalline substance which is not your true nature and then the mind the, the mind uh, and the and the feelings start to interact like this and then that then this complexity of these two particular elements then then communicate with the world and that that entanglement is uh, is doubled um uh via via how many people have contact with that and how many people understand how to communicate like this and then it exponentially explodes in a community so so then you you can really see that uh, um if one or more gather within my name and then you can you can interpret this in a, in, a, in wildly different ways. If a negative person gathers negative people in their name, it's going to be exponentially more powerful. If if you gather yourself within the transformative elements of fluidity and truth, 
then whatever you gather will exponentially expand upon upon that belief system or that or the belief system which has got to do with your initial feelings of faith and that faith is something which you feel originally and you never let go of that feeling of faith because you know that's your contact point of what you're meant to achieve and what you're meant to experience in life itself as you said you had this feeling come through you went down to your feet i had the same same experience when i was younger i had this ball of light in front of my chest that would drag me along the along the uh the footpath as i was walking and i knew this was this was a reflection a reflective element of the god consciousness guiding my spirit to to where i'm meant to arrive upon what i'm meant to arrive upon the, the feeling was already given to me i'd already arrived there uh, then you begin to transform this feeling into into a ministry of communication with those who are lost and everybody does this you either you either go with the uh, with the entanglement of disarray or you or you go to the entanglement of um of beauty and love until you find that that beauty and love will, will release you from every element that will send you back to this planet over and over and over again to learn a lesson that uh that is um not meant to be learnt so many times but when you when you have this feeling that you learn it once you carry it with you for the rest of your life and what buries that feeling is our communication in terms of the gathering of consciousness which isn't divine so we we get entangled with that what do you think yeah i mean that entanglement with other people i think uh being secured and anchored in that that presence that i experienced as a young kid and that continue to experience that i experienced with you and what i experienced with people who are saturated in that presence when I go out into the world and I interact with people that have certain issues, I think you've talked about like clearing your wind channel so that when people who have certain issues that have, that you've dealt with in the past, maybe reactivates it maybe inside of me. And then I kind of default back into identifying with who they are rather than like, and then I feel helpless and hopeless and being able to help them because I go, oh man, I wish I had what Luhan gave to me that I could give to them. Well, you know, what you're explaining is a form of entanglement, which is very, very easy to explain. If somebody puts something with words that have that the words have energy and before the words have energy, there may be a preemptive feeling behind those words and that, that goes into somebody else's body. And those words, um, then, then that entanglement goes into an unresolved feeling of, why do I feel unresolved? Why do I feel discontentment? And then you you can't talk to the original you can't really talk to the person who deposited it because what they're depositing only can be spoken to if they're willing to listen to the process of what they've done and the process of what they've done is revealed uh, within the body of somebody else who's received it so how do how do we um unlock our righteous voice in comparison to to the to the capacity of someone to grab your clothing and dress you in a form which doesn't belong to your evolutionary process or your ascension process right now so now we've gone back to the to to the blind man touching clothing it's very very interesting so so the so even like like we've spoken about retrospectively talking about something is very very dangerous but actually knowing that the feeling deposited is a block and when you when you look at uh when you look at the word uh satan literally reinterpreted from the language that it comes from to English it just means it Satan just means block it's not being in the right place at the right time it's being in the wrong place and not knowing you're in the wrong place and struggling with the wrong place instead of releasing oneself from the wrong place and slowly slowly without preemptively trying to force anything land exactly where you really meant to be and that's the most powerful position that anybody could could ever discover is what am I really meant to do? What am I really meant to realize instead of this entangled karmic mess that I'm involved in? Who am I really meant to be? We go back to our childhood. We exactly know who we're really meant to be because it was revealed to us before we were pre-programmed to be anything other than that, that, that pure, um, open-hearted, enlightened being that actually 
navigated all the feelings around it and and decided it was the the elements and the the environment was too strong and then submit to being transformed to something other than what they were in the beginning so we're all children of god yeah. that's what i really believe that's what that really means be a child of god be a child be a child um for the rest of your life be as be as um be as wise as a certain serpent but as gentle as a lamb And when you look at the um, the Hindi, the the Hindu or the Indian philosophy, the snakes have a very very refined um, sense of picking up vibration of, of danger and everything like this. So so it's uh, to be as wise as a serpent without preemptive motive is the only thing we've got. But if we're wise as a serpent with preemptive motive, then we become the devil himself. Mm. Yeah. And to be as gentle as a lamb is to gather the the most purest flock with inside of yourself because the be as gentle as a lamb relates to the gentleness of everybody has experienced this state of being before they became disrupted on their journey uh, to become hardened by the world and lose their gentleness and then the then be as wise as a serpent becomes be be cautious and be suspicious. And then from that suspicion, grow away from your from your uh, liberty in terms of your free flowing feelings of gratitude and love and joy. Yeah, yeah and that. <laughs> so when someone gives you those feelings, it's it's about not identifying with them and choosing to not do them. Yeah, but Just no matter what, with love no, and compassion. Yeah, with love and compassion. But no matter what, if something's forced on you um, to repetitiously, then that repetitious uh, enforcement will guide you to be in the in the prison cell of that of that repetition. Because the repetition, you have to adapt to the repetition and give up uh, your right to actually be exactly who you are and go with the repetition. And then and then as you as you get formulated into a into a station where you don't belong, you start to believe it. And then. And then the mechanisms of of uh, how you refer yourself to the world and how you reflect upon the world's response to you, then shows you the false path. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, you know, how it's it's raining out here, so it's getting very dark in my room. So I apologise. You can only see a floating head here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. How about how about we just now let, let's just summarize the last one i'm sure we've spoken about enough and we'll go on to the next what do you yeah. think yeah well just the being coming the nature be, made himself nothing and then being found in the appearance as a man he humbled himself and become obedient to death even death across what is the what is the death Ooh. on the cross the esoteric meaning of that oh become obedient to death it's like obviously that this is very very obvious the the older you get the more obedient you become because you realize that you cannot win. And that means you have to give up everything to submit to something that you can't control. And also to allow the, the disruption inside of you to, to, to be destroyed in a way which is destructively positive. So, so then we, we reverse engineer this into uh, be obedient to, to death itself. To submit to that, and to and to realize that what you're holding on to will will destroy you if you do not destroy it by not allowing it to become part of your persona. And when you when you don't allow it to become part of your persona, the the word destruction is is inappropriate actually. But you are destroying something which is actually uh, elemental nature is to destroy your your functionality as a as a pure human being in the beginning. So. So when it comes into you as this form, it's very destructive. If you destroy something destructive, it's very positive because you refuse to identify with it. So to become obedient to death and to to obedient to to realize that, that that obedience is to is to not allow something to destroy you while you're living, and to destroy that because it won't let you realize how um, blessed we are to have the time we've got. Yeah. 
<laughs> and to be to be nailed have, have you have you ever heard of somebody saying you're nailed i mean this is this is just like a, i've got it nailed you're nailed i mean can you move um forgive them father for they know not what they do if if we relate to father to the openness and the angelic feeling that we have on the heart he was speaking to every single heart which was destroyed by something which was destroying him so what was destroying him was destroying the people that was destroying him so so forgive them father for they don't know what they do so then then if what was destroying him he adopted i'm feeling really resentful he his uh connection with the divine is destroyed so forgive them father for they don't know what they do yeah because they're doing it to me but they're also doing it to themselves and they don't understand that they're doing it to themselves. yeah they don't know yes oh my god you're quick yeah they don't understand they're doing it to themselves and then that self-reflective nature is the, is then compounded on your, your if somebody does something enough to you um tortures you enough you will you will you will um adopt the position of that torture naturally so so going through everything that he went through in terms of the the torturous nature of the of the time span that he was tortured very very cruelly you can say well we've been we're we're being subject to this incrementally all of our life yeah it's this power over power under dynamic people are taught to be victims to submit and to give their power away from their body of they know the intuitive sense of what truth they know and then they allow themselves to be victimized by that and then there are people power over who are being the ones that are taking advantage of that but what we need is a leveling playing field here to give yeah. the power back when someone's trying to give the power to us yeah and you know the most interesting thing when you look at it from a political perspective the people that loved him were in the crowd watching him being destroyed and knew they couldn't say anything because they would be subject to the same torture and they know they couldn't handle it but they cried they cried um internally about what was happening to him but but they didn't have the power and the and the um the fortitude that he had to stand up and say well i'm going to stand up for my teacher and they said well pin them pin them on the cross as well yeah. so this is a very very interesting way to control people by by making a by making a statement like this but they but what what has happened is they've martyred him and through that through that everyone takes uh this this um crucifixion very very it's very very important to be reborn to yourself after you're crucified and tortured now it's raining and it's getting really dark you can hardly see me okay but you know it's um yeah th this is just a beautiful subject yeah yeah and so in in reference to personal power then personal power has to do with you releasing power and surrendering yes that's exactly the truth it couldn't have been said more eloquent and more it couldn't have been said more simply and that simple statement has so many ramifications yeah 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 and then if someone's trying to push against you and take your power from you so then where how is personal power implemented to um to not allow that to happen well you know there are circumstances where you have to submit and there are circumstances where you have to stand up and you know there have been many many stories of of people who have stood up and been repressed for years or in prison for years and then released you know so it's um i guess I guess the the only way you can stand up is to is to watch those you can't speak to and speak and and speak to those uh that allow you to in the same breath so personal power is a very very interesting affair in terms of um reducing reducing yourself to not to not uh being entangled in something which you know will never end so personal power is a very very interesting fair in terms of in terms of that uh that situational attunement because if if somebody uh is bullying you or somebody saying something which can which uh demotes you then you you note it you realize it and you just realize that it's it's not you it's them and then you patiently watch them and that's all you can really do but with um with someone you can speak to 
then it's a then it's a beautiful communion. But you are having a communion with the person that you can't speak to as well, because you're setting them free. You're noting what they're doing, but you're not you're not charging them with a crime. Because you're charging them with a crime, you become uh, the prison guard of them, um, and then you you lock yourself into your own perpetual. Uh, self-righteous indignation of who you think you are in comparison to somebody else and there will always be something in the world to humble you yeah and what's the discernment process look like to discover who you can't speak to i mean is it a trial and error thing sometimes where you're like try to speak and then you realize oh wait this is not someone i can yeah, well, you, you can put something on the table and you realize it's not received and you just be very, very quiet or you or you say, I'm not being received. So if you're not being received, you realize you're being blocked and the, the block is, is uh, you know, the, the pathway of communication is really uh, not accepted. So if you if there's non-acceptance there, then you realize that you still got to um, embrace that person where they are and you know that the fight to, uh, to make an exchange with those will be too dramatic because they're not, they're not willing to actually put themselves forward. So then you just watch them and, and uh, don't judge them, but know exactly who they are. And know exactly who they are without putting yourself on a pedestal or putting them lower than you. Just There is a, there is just a natural discordance in terms of, oh, it doesn't work because the frequencies uh, can't can't melt. But if, if you make the decision uh, to, to have a battle, how, how long will that battle transpire? Five years, 10 years, 50 right. years. As long yeah. as they can keep receiving some energy from it. Yeah, receiving some energy from it. So then you've got to decide, is this is this worth my life energy to try and resolve something which can't be resolved because the fight is the element which may excite that person. Yeah, right. Yeah, and in that excitement, they they will do everything to to keep this excitement going because they've got they've got a, a hormonal kick or a or an endorphin kick from it right. so you so you just g gently let them go and, and watch them very very carefully and uh and just know that uh, the moment you judge them you've you put yourself above them and the power of your judgment will be the power that uh, that destroys you not destroys them Yeah. Mm. yeah, I mean, having empathy to see that people people are where they're at because of the circumstances that they've been given to them, and it's you know they they have made their choices as well in reference to those circumstances. But yeah, yeah but, but but also I hear what you're saying that that's very 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 smart. But but when you look at it, just say when we look at it, the decisions they made. Are they making their decisions? Or are they making the decisions which were forced upon them, which saved them from a situation where they lost their purity? Right. It was and a sense look, of survival. Yeah. Like they felt like they had to do this in order to make sure it was it was okay. Yeah, but in, in actuality, it's really not okay. It's just a protective mechanism to save themselves from the brutish behavior of and um of whatever their circumstances that had delivered to them and that is the test for us to be here is to is to see that um you this should not be coveted it should be let free yeah. and if this should be let free it's not our right to covet other people because because the moment you you throw a blanket of of mis misalignment over someone don't you cover yourself with that own, with that very same blanket And that can be represented as um, the uh, the poverty of of one's clothing, or the you know dressing someone in your poverty, and then re then dressing yourself in that same poverty. But dressing yourself in the poverty you throw on somebody else is a very very complex affair because you take that poverty, and then you learn how to manipulate that poverty in a very very intelligent way. Ooh, that's complicated and that's hard that's, yeah it's like yeah because you know I, I want i want to be uh it's more like seeing people okay i know who you are even if you don't know who you are and i'm gonna choose to see that part of yourself and uh, understand the snakes and the serpents that are that are trying to manipulate me or come come at me when they do 
Like I see your innocence, but I also see that you have cause you have ability to cause harm. Yeah, yeah. I guess the the only thing I can say with that is is in terms of that experience what you're what you are putting forward here, which you already know you forgive that person for who they are. But then again, if if they smite you, if they smite is to leave an injury, then you if when you look at that injury, they're sending you a test to become the alternate version of them. And if you're if you're not understanding that the the, the block or the test that they're giving you is to is to help them refine their attention or their their frequency going into you, so that can, you can coexist with them in terms of your response. So we've got to be very, very careful to say, I'm bleeding and then live with the bleeding, live with the sorrow and submit to that sorrow without without giving credence to the value of. I'm going to get that person back by thinking about them. I'm going to talk about them, everything like this. Okay. Yeah, because then it becomes a preoccupation and that's where all your energy is going. And you're actually fighting that person regardless of being in their presence at all. That's right. So who are you fighting with? Exactly. Um, but there, but there are two ways to look at this. You you fight with some with the imaginary idea of somebody inside of your mind, or you let go of your mind completely, and then you re, you receive what's uh, what's in your heart, and then then you, the battle is where did these feelings come from that take my voluminous bright shining light and it go, and it implodes inside of itself while well, you deal with the feeling that's been put there. And then you you watch it, watch it, release it, forgive it until it blooms again. And when we look when we when we look at flowers, is this is what's happening? One flower will go like this. It will it will have its day, and then it will it will implode, and then another flower flower will go like this in the same, and then it'll go like this. This is exactly what a heart's meant to do. It's meant to raise to raise to the to the light, and then collapse inside of itself, raise to the light and collapse inside of itself because once you raise to the light, you have a certain realization. Something comes in uh, that the circumstances are too strong. The, the flower is too delicate. It collapses in on itself. We've got to make sure that we come up as a as a renewed yeah. flower so that we can actually see that uh, that that the the inevitability, the inevitability of a collapse is certain. We can be certain we're going to be challenged. We can be certain we collapse. It's it's how we revive, and how we how we reach back to the light again. Wow. And a flower has no bias towards its neighbor or its or its neighboring flower from from the same roots. It sees it it sees it it sees it going like this, and then it comes up like that. Yet it seems like a different flower. But this is what this is what we're like with communal consciousness. As soon as we say someone collapsing. We understand that they've collapsed and we're from the same the same planet we're rooted in, in the same planet we're mobile for sure but when we see someone collapse uh, we, we give our light to them and then they they reflower again and this is what we're meant to be for each other but when we see a flower collapsing we go oh that's nice another another petal will come up and replace that and we've got to associate that to to our human condition and then not and to trust the process that that's going to happen and not just uh, maybe there's some concern of like needing to caretake and being the one that helps them the flower. A, oh yes, for sure. Process. Yeah, for sure. Giving being a, being a care, caretaker of of somebody's um, uh, collapse state is a very very beautiful thing. You be of service to them. Now you know I've been through that. You've been through. It. Everybody's been through this. They collapse, and somebody beautiful comes along and assists by being job by just being kind and being loving. So your own resources will come to the surface. But if your resources come to the surface, and you need to counsel the feelings which come up uh, because they're discordant, um, because you're still holding on to feelings of disruption, then another human being is very, very important to come in and say, "Well, I love you. Just put it on the table. I just listen to it." and uh, and if they've got something very, very nourishing to say, they say it, and that will that that nourishment will destroy the poison. Or you say, uh, or, the, or we go back to the, and we're still working on this one saying you've got there, but uh, well, I'm going to flip something else in. It's like um, a weeds, weeds, weeds among the wheat. You just, you just, uh, you wait very, very patiently. You know the weeds are there, but they say the an, an enemy has put. Uh, uh, seeds of uh, of um, wheat within the weeds, 
and then the master of the land says well uh, just don't try and pull them out now because you'll pull up all of our good intentions wait patiently to watch what appears and when you see what appears and it's strong enough to be held within your grasp pull it out yeah. and put it to the side and that 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 is uh, relate in relationship to ourself and that's in, in relationship to saving somebody else from their devastation have we gone too far <laughs> yeah. yeah and that trusting that timing and that process that it will unfold in its natural time yeah and the yeah. time that you want to see it and your ego wants to see it yeah that's from the, that's from the perspective of someone who believes they're being truly of service but from the perspective who somebody's in that situation you can't make it it just appears so if it yeah so if you reverse that then somebody's dilemma it it uh, you don't you don't manufacture it it's already manufactured inside of them and then you can be of service to it but if you ma if you try to manufacture that from your side to to get it to to occur then maybe maybe it's a it's a misnomer in terms of uh, the timing issue and allowing it to to be organically coming up by itself you're right I'm a word salad, aren't I? But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great combination with the movements. Yeah, yeah. So what's the, what's the next part of the saying, beautiful? Um, yeah, so he, he becoming obedient to death on the cross, therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. The name that is above every name, so no name nobody nobody has the capacity to be to be integrated with everything but not everything that's seen but everything which is unseen <laughs> yeah and that kind of reminds me of the the buddhist thing as I am, so are others. As others are, so am I. Thus, identifying self and others, harm no one, have them not be harmed. Yeah. But all, but also to to inside of our body, there's a there's a an extremely strong unconscious self, which is which um, emerges from from the from darkness. But the darkness is full of everything, because. When, when I say that may scare everybody, but it's not a scary thing. If you go into outer space, uh, the only thing that makes outer space comfortable for, for everybody is to see the light of the stars. So when you show your light, you're, you're an expression of the unknown element within you. Right. So we're the stars and the unknown, the unknown quality or the unconscious. Now there's not the unconscious mind. I'm talking about the unconscious, um, immovable, movability within you that that uh, that will adapt to every single circumstance in kind which understands every single circumstance from that unconscious perspective yeah but the unconscious perspective is is alive with information and is the essence of everything which appears and that's the thing to have faith in yes Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so we still got a lot, a lot of this saying to go, Kyle. No, that's it. That was the end. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> we did it. We did it in, the, in an hour and five minutes. Can you believe it? That's not bad. Yeah, yeah that's a, that, that's a beautiful thing. That's a really, really beautiful thing you brought up. And just to just to let everybody know, Kyle um, sent this to me in an email, and I said, "Well, uh, let's talk about it with you instead of having a podcast with somebody else about this." So, and uh, yeah, and you came along, and this has been very, very beautiful. Yeah, Luan, thank you so much for this opportunity to chat with you about this, something that's near and dear to my heart, and to kind of get um, a different perspective that's refreshing and new, yeah. breathe some life into the text.
Yeah, and there's there's one thing I would say uh, to everybody that that's watching this that is uh, religion religious base is that uh, the quality the quality of of the unknown factor or the quality of of what you're growing into always appears as a different element as you grow. So so everybody will will have their version of the divine and as the 10 years goes by that that version of the divine will be will be sprinkled with so much subtleties within their love and their embrace toward their devotion in terms of their journey so to to identify one element to say this is right if anybody says that this is verbatim then look at your life and say this is verbatim and then 10 years later you go well why did i say that was verbatim i've changed mm. yeah so to give to give everybody enough freedom to be full of the love of their own expression is is the only thing that really matters but we have to have a fundamental basic true basis of truth which guides every human being not to fall from the path of righteousness or the or the path which reveals uh the, the true essence of their of their real nature in terms of embracing embracing other human beings and gathering that power in a unified manner with no boundaries of perception Yeah, and coming into union with the person that's in front of you. Yeah, and that's touching the divine. And that's what we're here for is to is to is to notice that there's there's a divine process happening between everybody. Every single moment, everything we everything we do is a, is a divine process, and especially when we touch upon our animals in the world, our trees, everything. And especially other human beings, there's a divine process going on there. And if we can honor that, then our path will be quickened to such a degree that it's unbelievable. And that's the power of having a discipline where you're reminding yourself of this thing. I'm doing this every day. I'm reminding myself of my devotion to God, to source, to the person right in front of me. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you tell them. And that's what, that's it. Because <laughs> it, it is the truth. <laughs> and you All know, right, well, when you, oh, I know you want to close now, but I want to say one other thing that, that's so important is it is to embrace someone and know that they're full and happy right now doesn't mean they're going to be full and happy in two days mm. so if you know that that people have their their ebbs and flows you wait for the most appropriate moment to be there for them when they're in their in their in their hour of need not to just embrace them when they're happy and they're full but to embrace them when they're when they're at the lowest ebb and to embrace someone's um, vulnerabilities is to nurture their strengths. Because yeah. when they're when they're loved within their vulnerabilities, they will want to love and cherish your vulnerabilities. And there's our power. Yeah, that's the lowest. That's the water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Wuhan. Thank you so much for this time and for your devotion to your students. I look forward to more. Yeah. Well, I love you so much, Kyle. And and I really appreciate you in my life. You're you're a guiding light, really. <laughs> Thanks, Will. I love you too. You've done so much for me. <laughs> You've given so yeah. much for me. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love you too. You're giving me so much as well. So it's a, so I guess I love you. I love you. I love you. And, and, we, will, <laughs> and we'll, we will see you. We will we'll see you soon. And this will be up maybe in a couple of days. Uh, this is just beautiful. I can't even remember what we said, but it feels wonderful. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. Okay. Love you so much. Love you, everybody. And yeah. we'll, we'll see you next podcast. 
Take care, little honey. Bye. Bye, beautiful.